Okay, now look. Let's not make any trouble for each other. All I want to do is to get out of here. It is too late for that. America's top security experts have chosen this man. Don't take any chances. This guy's a killer. For a special mission. But first, he's got to pass one little test. Speak English. Did your nightingale sing? There I was, sitting in a dark theater, almost by myself, back in 1985. And I was about to watch the adventure of this pulp paperback adventurer named Remo Williams being brought to life by the great Fred Ward. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. At the time, I didn't know nothing about the source material. I didn't know it was named on those pulp paperbacks named The Destroyer. Never heard of it, and I didn't even have a clue what a pulp paperback was. At this time in my life, if it wasn't sold at my local comic book store, I didn't read it, and I didn't want to read it. But this was Remo Williams, The Adventure Begins. That alone, and its thrilling TV spots on my small black and white television set in my bedroom, made me get to the theater opening weekend. I sat there watching the adventure unfold, from the thrilling training scene to the adventures high above on the Statue of Liberty. I was on the edge of my seat the whole time. Leaving the theater, I still had a rush in my body, as I remember running around the parking lot, sneaking around cars, and being yelled at by my grandmother as I slid across the hood of her pickup truck trying not to be caught by the evil Wilford Brimley, who also didn't catch Remo Williams. I was hooked and I couldn't wait for the adventures to continue. After all, this was called The Adventure Begins, so I'm sure there would be more Remo Williams. Remo was played by the great character actor Fred Ward, who was signed on to play the role in three films. Along for the adventure was Joel Gray, playing Remo's master trainer. It would take Joel four hours sitting in a makeup chair to transform into the old Korean master. Joel was a white American actor in his early 50s, so without a doubt this was a controversial role. However, producers would explain that they wanted to hire a Korean actor for the role, but they couldn't find one. Which I believe means they didn't really look too hard. As controversial as this role was, Joel would be nominated for a Golden Globe for his role. Also in the film was Kate Mulgrew, long before she wore a Starfleet outfit, or waved around a kitchen spoon, but it was long after she was Columbo's unseen wife. Wilford Brimley would also star. This was after his adventure with those Ewoks, but the same year he would be cocooned by aliens. But I'm not sure if it was before or after his fight with diabetes. Diabetes. Anyway, I was thrilled and excited to wait for more adventures of Remo Williams, but it was clear after opening weekend, I wouldn't get the sequel that I hoped for. The movie would only bring in $3 million on its opening weekend, and just about $14 million overall. It was clear there would be no planned sequel adventures for Remo Williams, and soon the movie was just another forgotten lost gem that would be found by most movie fans on HBO at 3 o'clock in the morning or rented off some back wall shelf at a local video store in 1987 because it was part of some employee's peak of the week. Us fans moved on, but we all hoped we would see more Remo Williams. Whenever the film would be brought up years later, it was always followed by The Adventure Ended There. I really wish we got more adventures, but what most fans don't know, there was more. It seems The Adventure didn't end when it began in 1985. There was more. Kind of. If you have tuned in to watch my worthless pupil, uh, Remo Williams, switch please to another channel. Orion Pictures and Dick Clark. Yes, that Dick Clark. You didn't think you would get a Dick Clark reference when you clicked on this video, now did you? Anyway, Dick Clark and the guys over at Orion didn't want the rights to a good character go to waste. So rather than continuing the adventures of the everyday man's James Bond at the theater, they decided to bring the adventurer to the small screen with a television series. Now before you tell me in the comments that this isn't the same universe as the movie and it's more of a reboot than a sequel to the film, you're wrong if the television show is set a year after the events in the film and would even use footage for the movie in its opening credits. Sadly, due to this being a television series, some changes had to be made, and the most notable was the casting. Fred Ward, who had brought Remo Williams to life, was recast, this time played by Jeffrey Meek, and Joel Grey was replaced by Ronnie McDowell. I guess they still believe they couldn't find a Korean actor to play the role. In the 45-minute TV pilot, Remo's master feels that Remo is becoming compliant and hires a hitman to try to kill Remo Williams in order to keep him on his feet. 
What Remo's master doesn't know is the hitman he hires has big plans to replace Remo as the student and would stop at nothing to get Remo out of the way. The pilot was unable to get anyone interested in the show, as it went unsold to every network Orion pitched it to. Looking to not just waste the film, it was sold, or more like given to ABC, due to their close ties with Dick Clark, who dropped it Monday night, August 15, 1988, an hour before the Republican National Convention with a warning that the show might be preempted due to the live event scheduled at 9 p.m. A dead spot for the network for sure. The pilot to the would-be Remo Williams television series went forgotten, even more so than the movie. As the movie went on to be found on video cassette, it became somewhat of a cult classic. The TV pilot that aired in August 1988 was never seen again on television and never released on home video. That was until 2019 when it would air off and on again on the Star's Encore channel. The show wasn't anything special. It's worth a watch if you're a Remo Williams fan, but that's about it. But it seems maybe it came a little too early. In the early and mid-90s, there was a boom in first-run television shows that was being sold into syndication, such as Star Trek The Next Generation, Hercules, Baywatch, and a lot more. This would have been a lot better fit for a show like Remo Williams than being sold to network television. Now over at the Internet Movie Database, there is a 2017 listing for a film called Remo Williams 2, The Adventure Continues. But I could find nothing more about this film, and I believe it must be just some fan film that the Internet Movie Database decided to list. But that's a look at the somewhat sequel to Remo Williams that we did get, at least for one night back in 1988. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Tell me your thoughts on the movie Remo Williams. Did you enjoy it? If you haven't seen it, do yourself a favor and watch it tonight. Well, I want to thank you for watching. As always, thumb up, turn like my content, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk again soon. You have heard all saying, as good as you are, there is always someone better. Sure, so. I am that someone. Hey, jump <laughs> man channel popping though. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony. <laughs>